Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Trump endorsed candidate that put him in the lead until Dems said what they discovered. President Trump has been working hard to ensure that Republicans retain their Senate and House of Representatives seats in the 2018 midterm elections as well as during the special elections. To ensure this outcome he has been undertaking more and more rallies as well as giving additional stump speeches. In fact, he just gave one in Ohio recently. However, some strange happenings occurred during the Ohio general election that occurred after President Trump spoke that has everyone wondering what Democrats are doing behind the scenes to unfairly sway the election results. 100% fed up reported. President Trump traveled to Ohio to stump for GOP congressional candidate Troy Balderson in Columbus 12th District, where voters cast their ballots in a special election to replace the remainder of ex-Representative Pat Tiberi's term as a U.S. congressman. After the election, it was announced that the Trump-endorsed candidate, Troy Balderson was the victor by a margin of over 1,500 votes. After the special election, Cleveland.com reported, with 100% of precincts reporting, Balderson had a 1,754 vote lead over O'Connor, with more than 202,000 votes cast. O'Connor declined to concede the race Tuesday night, telling supporters we're not stopping now. News outlets, including the Associated Press, also did not call the race, citing the number of uncounted absentee and provisional ballots. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, 588 uncounted votes show up in a Columbus suburb. The votes from a portion of one voting location had not been processed into the tabulation system, officials explained. Election night results are tabulated through the use of a device called a master peb that is returned to the board along with flash drives from each machine. The Griswold Center voting location had two master pebs, only one of which was read and processed into the tabulation system on election night. The additional votes identified during this preliminary audit will be reflected in the final official results certified by the Board of Elections on August 24. Balderson's Democrat opponent, Danny O'Connor took to Twitter to ask Democrats to donate money to make sure every last vote is counted fairly? Do Democrats really need to donate money to make sure votes are counted fairly? What does this even mean? The Cincinnati Inquirer is reporting that 3,435 provisional ballots and 5,048 absentee ballots will be counted by the August 24 deadline. O'Connor continues to campaign on his Twitter account. Cleveland.com reported. The special election for Ohio's 12th congressional district came down to the wire Tuesday night, with Republican Troy Balderson edging out Democrat Danny O'Connor in unofficial results. With 100 percent of precincts reporting, Balderson had a 1,754 vote lead over O'Connor, with more than 202,000 votes cast. Green Party nominee Joe Manchick had a little more than 1,100 votes, or about 0.6 percent of the vote. O'Connor declined to concede the race Tuesday night telling supporters we're not stopping now. News outlets, including the Associated Press, also did not call the race, citing the number of uncounted absentee and provisional ballots. There are 5,048 outstanding absentee ballots and 3,435 outstanding provisional ballots left to count, according to the Ohio Secretary of State's office. However, Balderson and other Republicans claimed victory late Tuesday night tonight. I'm going to promise to you that I'm going to work relentlessly, relentlessly for this 12th congressional district," Balderson told a crowd of cheering supporters. America is on the right path, and we're going to keep it going that way. Democrats had hoped to flip the reliably Republican Central Ohio seat, which opened up when Republican Pat Tiberi stepped down in January. While President Donald Trump won the affluent, well-educated district by 11 percentage points in 2016, the president's ratings in the district have dropped in recent polls. But Balderson, a state senator from Zanesville, scored a 22-percentage-point win in GOP-friendly-looking county and a nine-point victory margin in conservative Delaware County. O'Connor, the Franklin County recorder, won his home county by a landslide, but Balderson won the other six counties in the district. Balderson, who also won a crowded GOP primary in May by a razor-thin margin, relied on outside groups for most of his ads, most notably the House GOP-linked Congressional Leadership Fund which poured millions into ads claiming that O'Connor would support GOP noir Nancy Pelosi for House Speaker. O'Connor pledged early in the campaign not to back Pelosi for Speaker, though he grudgingly yielded to MSNBC's Chris Matthews that he would support her over a Republican Speaker. Balderson also drew last-minute help from President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence, both of whom campaigned for Balderson in the final days of the race. O'Connor, meanwhile, raised nearly $1.5 million 
most of which was spent on ads portraying him as a moderate and hitting Balderson for saying he would be open to raising the minimum age for Social Security and Medicare. Even with a loss, O'Connor's performance in a traditionally Republican district may give hope to Democrats that he can beat Balderson when the two clash again in a contest for a full, two-year term in the November general election. But U.S. Rep. Steve Stivers, the chair of the National Republican Congressional Committee, told Cleveland.com Tuesday night that a win's a win for Balderson. Democrats, I'm sure, are going to try and turn this into some sort of moral victory, Stivers said. But last time I checked, moral victories don't get a vote on the congressional floor. If Democrats are doing shady and illegal things in order to ensure a special election when they will be held responsible. However, they will be unsuccessful in the end. It is necessary that a Republican fills the Ohio seat to ensure that important legislation such as an infrastructure package gets passed. Something that will not be possible if we do not have a Republican majority in office. Additionally, Democrats have made it clear that comprehensive gun control, as well as innumerable other pet projects, will go to the top of the list on their legislative agenda if they win back the House and Senate. None of these issues, however, are to the benefit of the American people but are instead a petty attempt to try and get back at Republicans for achieving their goal and passing tax reform as well as repealing the individual mandate which is part of the Affordable Care Act. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.